I don't really have a clever way to start this. I don't. We were talking about some crazy stuff off camera beforehand, so now it's like switching gears back to Ruby. <laughs> right! This is actually saner than what we were talking about. And we're talking about colliding dreams and angry fighting. It... If I was going to make some joke about if you die in the dream, you die for real, or Inception. I think dream we've done that dream. already. We've, we've, yeah. we've done There's every permutation. Yeah, I think that. we really have. We've done Dream Warriors. We've done just everything. We've done everything. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Dream Warriors. There's a great... I'm, music video. Yes. It's ridiculous. And I'm sure our commenters are going to be like, well, you haven't made a joke about this. I'm like, that's true. But that's okay. We've done everything. You know what? A dream is a wish your heart makes. And I don't have a clever way to follow that. No. 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 This, this is why we've had such a weird lackluster start. Anyway, we are <laughs> talking about Ruby Ice Queendom. And once again, for those who are joining us for the first time, I'm Katie. I'm Megan. And Hello. these are not reactions. Nope. Uh, which it goes against much of what we do on this channel. But this isn't solely a Rooster Teeth production. It is done. It's, it's done. I cannot remember for the life of me which studio did it, but it's airing on Crunchyroll. So it's in that weird gray area for reactions and we don't need a copyright strike on this channel, you know, so we're just, we're just talking about it. We're just gonna have a nice chat about how weirdly uneven this show is. Yeah. Like, it's good, but it's... I don't want to be here like, it's less than the sum of its parts, but it's definitely dragged down by the inconsistencies. It's picked up so much. <laughs> After, like, episode five, it just took off in a flat sprint, and it's been absolutely wonderful. But the beginning got fucked up by pacing, and then this most recent episode, because we're talking about 9 and 10 here, I think the budget started to run out. Something along those lines. Either that or they're saving the budget for the big climax for, yes. finish. Um, Regardless, yeah. this is the episode where you start to see very long still shots or shots that are framed oddly where it's mostly a still frame and then you have a little bit of motion in the middle yeah. like shots, <laughs> shots that are still for too long things that go on for a, a bit yeah. too much for for a minute um you you remarked that like it was holding on one character for so long that like you had it was holding on for, yeah. throws yeah it was holding on Xion forever and the first thought was did crunchy roll freeze again and the second thought was this is a fucking amazing reaction image thank you for this opportunity <laughs> where it's just Xion giving Ozpin some side eye what kind of institution are what you running here Oz? are you running sir <laughs> and he's like like everything else in my life I'm fucking winging it. <laughs> the, uh, cool. yeah, the, the metaphor I used um, before we started recording was this show stumbled at the starting line, but it found its footing and got into a really good rhythm as, as it went on, and it's tripped again. It stumbled yeah. again, and I'm really, really hoping that for the finish kick, it can get across the, the finish line with like a strong ending but even if it does as you said this is still a very uneven yeah it's been an season. uneven ride so i'm hoping it can finish strong i'm hoping it can do that finish kick thing that runners do when the race is about to end but man oh yeah these these two episodes really i'm not very fond of them i like what's happening um, but the execution is very odd. You know what? I take that back. I like what's happening in... It's 9 and 10 we're talking about, right? Yes. I like what's happening in 10. <clears throat> what's happening in 9 really left me wanting more. Because we, we talked about it earlier in the season. <clears throat> Hilariously, when, all the good developments were in horny jail. <laughs> That's not inaccurate. <laughs> for the but, people going, what the fuck are you talking the about for the new house. ones? Yeah, yeah the, the bashful. The, if the... Oh, God. I refuse the to call one, it anything that's not horny jail. <laughs> if the dopey one was silly jail, and so the bashful one is now horny jail. <laughs> because that's where we sent the lesbians. <laughs> Both of you, get out! <laughs> 
Get out of go to horny jail. This is <laughs> and it's this place full of things that Weiss doesn't want to think about. So there's if we're calling it horny jail, there's a repressed joke in there too. But the, uh, yeah. But we were talking about it a little earlier this season when we had the episode where Jean was, you know, infected by the nightmare, and we blew through that so quickly. And we were talking about how, like, oh, that could have been the material for an entire episode. Yeah. Why did we run through it so quickly? And that's... Because we have 13 episodes and that's it. And that's how I felt about um, this episode nine. Like, Ruby going Inception, getting stuck, caught in a dream within a dream, that should have been the entire episode. Yeah. That seems like a huge plot like plot beat and it gets hand waved away like she has a very nice conversation with Weiss yeah but the actual resolution to it gets hand waved away so quickly and she doesn't break out of the dream herself Jean's the one that has to save her which I don't hate he's a good I character. do appreciate Jean stepping up and then having that moment yeah. of what can I do what can I use oh the sword's still here let's use that yeah I don't Just like he's not he acts like an idiot sometimes, and we are still, you know, tail into season one for this. But he can be resourceful, and this mm -hmm. is also what we see in him later on, where he's the strategist, he's the one coming up with plans, he knows what his team is capable of, and mm -hmm. he's good at using the things around him. So, as much as I dislike, okay, Ruby couldn't get out of this herself, and we were in Inception Land for like five minutes of screen time total... I did like Jean being the one to go, okay, what can I use? How can I use it? Just, you know. Yeah, it's just very weird that for a story that for all intents and purposes is about the relationship between these four women in particular, with the relationship between Weiss and Ruby being kind of the main focus of this particular season. Uh, it's kind of weird to have Jean come in there and be like, okay, I'm gonna save you from this particular problem. I, again, I don't dislike Jean or anything like that, um, and at, like, I appreciate whatever he steps up, and his, his, you know, go-to role in any given Ruby story is essentially being a support for his friends. Yeah. So I don't dislike it, it's just... What I was imagining was going to happen was this really cool set piece of going through Ruby's dreams and then her getting breaking out of the dream herself. That doesn't mean that what they gave us was... Like, when something doesn't meet your expectations, that doesn't mean the thing is bad. That, eh, like, we're all in charge of managing our own expectations yeah. for things. You know, there there's certainly a conversation to be had about fandom doing that in general with a lot of different properties. Uh, I won't make a Star Wars <laughs> joke here. You just did by yep. saying that. Oh, uh, uh, but, but yeah, uh, like, but like you said, what we did get was essentially one scene with Ruby and Weiss. I will say I liked the vines being everywhere on yeah. the bed, but I feel like it could have been amazing. And part of this, is, and we've, we've actually seen this in more than one instance, where we end an episode somewhere and we jump to someplace else in the beginning of the next episode. And it's not like, okay, we have characters in three different locations and we're just swapping locations, but it's happening concurrently. We have a time skip between the end of an episode and the beginning of the next one. Uh, three and four, actually, for me, were the ones that really hit Where me. Where you're like, because, this feels like we're missing something. Yeah. yeah, it was very much, you know, watching four at Anime Expo and leaning over and going, we didn't miss an episode, did we? Like, this is right after. And the way they were doing the storytelling, etc., like, kind of going, oh, this is how it works. This is how, so you didn't sit through an exposition scene, you saw it all in action. But it really felt like we missed something there. And then in between 8 and 9, here, like at the end of 8, we had this whole ass congratulations Horror bit. Horror movie ending. Horror movie which ending. Which was beautiful. Where Ru it looked like Ruby was very much aware that she was in yet another dream and it was a bad situation. And then we start this episode and she's in her room and she's asleep. And, she's, and again, this just feels like missing content in between the credit sequence and the cold open. Mm -hmm. Like... This is, again, we, we come back to 
weird pacing sometimes. And for the most part, again, episode five on has been pretty solid in terms of most of what it does. But this stood out to me in terms of we went from that ending and then we just kind of hand waved it away and went to, well, she's here now. Well, she's in her room. And I get it. It's, you know, it's the nightmare being insidious, being like, yeah. no, this is actually a good thing. You're happy. You're safe. You know. Oh, I, I get it. Uh, especially because she, it's the, the same nightmare that, you know, has ensnared Weiss. So yeah. it makes sense that she would be able to talk to Weiss in some capacity and um, get some clarification on a few things. But it is it just, yeah. if you're sitting down and watching this all back to back, which you do sometimes, but I mean, even in other it, serialized things. It feels like somebody really stepped on the brake, for sure. Oh, yeah, or just whiplash between episodes because even serialized ones if you have something episodic you can do whatever mm -hmm. between episodes who gives a damn but when you have something serialized like this and it jumps like this and it's not an in media res it's not something like that it's just okay well there was a beginning ready to hear scene right right Wow! There was a getting ready scene here, but we're just going to throw you straight in the deep end and not bother flashing back to show things. It's not in media res. It's just a time skip in between episodes that really gives you the I missed something feeling, and that's not well executed. Mm -hmm. Like, even when it is between episodes and you can kind of do a little bit of wiggle room, it's still a contiguous story. And if you do that, you cut bits out of it. Yeah. And those bits, like, you can t if you have a sheet cake you can, and you cut a big slice out of the middle, you can fucking tell. Yeah. You can tell where there, there are bits of connecting tissue that are missing. Yeah. And I feel like that's what we had here between eight and nine. Mm hmm Because it's like, oh, she's in a dream. Like, yeah, but she knows she's in a dream and we had that congratulations moment that was just it was such super a beautiful up. ending oh yeah um, for great. that episode it was it, it like well animated and very eerie and creepy and um the perfect place to to roll the credits um for that it, like it was Superb. It was masterful. And then I'd argue that it was cheapened by the cold open for this one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's... Again, we, we try not to sit here and go, oh, it's bad. Oh, I don't like it. But it's... There are some things in this show where it's just like, I had particular problems with this. Yeah. I don't like it. And I like understand it. budgetary restrictions, scripting restrictions, having to fit a whole lot of stuff in a very small package. Mm -hmm. Like, I get all of that. Yeah. I, saying I don't like it is not the same as saying it's bad. Um, and for, for that, for this plot beat as the series stands right now, I do not like that we didn't get more of Ruby inside her own dream. Yeah. Uh, regardless of how she got out of it, if you want to make it her, her character arc of like breaking out herself, or if you want it to be Jean coming to her aid, either way, I wanted more. I feel like this is and, between the credits and yeah. the cold open. We had a missing episode. Yeah, and that's the thing. If we hadn't spent the time on those first three episodes, this you know, at the start of the season, where where the show initially got off to that rocky start, if we hadn't done that, we could have spent an entire episode in Ruby's dream, and that would have been metal. <laughs> This is again yeah. where I continue to question whether this show was made for existing Ruby fans or to bring in new people and does it thread that needle? Mm -hmm. And I think my answer is still kind of no. I still think the attempt to thread that needle weakened it on both ends. And it's not an easy needle to thread. No, I'm not going to no. sit here and go, it was the easiest thing ever and you fucked it up. That's not true. It is very difficult to do a mid-quill and also try to bring in new people. Just making a show in general Making is a hard. show is fucking hard, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, all of that in mind, I still don't think they were able to execute it mm -hmm. to, to a level that would work for everyone. And this is why we talk about the rocky pacing and the weird things they did with the summary and what would have worked and where the focus is and just things like that. Mm -hmm. I think a number of the problems attempt from, att god damn, stem from attempting to thread that needle. Mm -hmm. I don't know whose decision that was, but it's a decision that you really have to stick behind. 
And I don't think, I don't know if it was a budget issue or scripting or whatever, but I don't think, I don't think it was perfectly done. I think they hit the sides a bit, you know? Yeah. And Doesn't again, make it bad. It just makes it like, this is kind of a weird first impression to get someone into Ruby. Yeah. And like I said, I'm hoping that the series has a strong finish. Um, yes. Because then we can take a step back and go, okay, this is how we feel about it as a whole. And this is where it could have been improved. You know, that, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, so there, there's that. I will say, though, much, 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 much better use of Mirror Mirror than yes. earlier in the season. Oh, my God. We, we got this redux with Weiss. Uh, we've been jokingly calling it embracing the uh, sweet <laughs> And now release I of death. embrace the sweet release of death. <laughs> with the coffin <laughs> opening up and her stepping inside to go to sleep. Forever. I, I'm yeah. specifically hearing it in the T Team Four Star abridged for for the Bardock movie. I'm specifically hearing it in his voice, and now I embrace the sweet release of death. <laughs> that's that's kind of where we are with this. And while it's opening up, she's you know considering this and think about things, and that's when we get this reprise of Mirror Mirror from Weiss. And I kind of wish they hadn't given it to Pira to start, because this worked. Yes. It was a much, much better use. Like, I get it. The The idea is, um, again, like... She again, sees the parallels what, between herself and Pira. What she's projecting and everything like that. Yeah. But they really should have held it closer to the chest. Uh, that's not to say that the performance earlier on wasn't well done. It the really actress did a great job, and yes. I can't wait to hear Jen Brown sing it. Yes, it's going to be great. But like this right here, it's like, yeah, no, this this is a this is important. This is a huge yeah. emotional moment in the way that musicals, like when when somebody does their song, are usually huge emotional moments. Yeah. and yeah. so they really should have held it on. Uh, they really should have held on to it until here. Um, but that being said, this was a much was more appropriate use of it. It looked beautiful. It sounded great. Yeah. Um, I think you did say it, it still kind of felt a little like a time filler, but... It did feel a little like a time filler in some way. There were some parts where they were, where the imagery really matched what they were doing, and there were some parts where it's just, camera sure is lingering on this <laughs> for a while now. <laughs> you good? Can, so, she can someone check on Bob? <laughs> Did Bob fall asleep behind the camera again? God damn it, Bob. <laughs> Get it together, guys. Get it together, Bob. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, uh, again, I, I'm wondering if that wasn't a budget thing that we were starting to see as early as this episode. Because yeah. we it, really saw him in 10. It makes but. me wonder, actually, since this is the second time this song is being used if we're going to get a third instance of it, you know, rule of threes before the season's out, in which case I'll be like, okay, I see what they were going for with using it three times. Um, I don't necessarily know if that will work. I manage that because this was really powerful. Like this, what we just saw would have been the third powerful way to do it. Cause this, this, the second time that we saw it really hit home would have been the great closure for rule of three. So I'm wondering how they could use it, except for possibly as, like, the closing theme. Maybe. Um, or, I don't know, maybe, maybe since the nightmare is located on the stage. Maybe. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're still in dream world, maybe when Nega Weiss and regular Weiss, you know, go back to normal, you know, come back together and go back to normal. Maybe maybe she won't sing it, but maybe it will be an instance of where we're actually going to hear the, the song itself non-diegetically. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. In in the same way that we would that we did for the white trailer way back yeah. in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. We're speculating. Point being is if I'm wondering if they're planning on doing one more instance of it or even if it'll just come back as like the like one or two lines from it, and then, yeah. like, it will resolve in some way that way. I don't know. but Because it's also an image song about being lonely, so after a certain point, when you've hit the friendship is magic climax, yeah. <laughs> you kind of can't use it after that. <laughs> you can't go, I'm the loneliest of all when well, you're, you're surrounded, surrounded by friends. 
friend. <laughs> it's, it's that meme of the guy in the corner at the party. Nobody knows I'm the loneliest of all. <laughs> Someone please do that. Someone, Someone please do that. Oh my god. <laughs> Where oh it's Weiss. My god. And then there's Yang and Blake are like the couple in the, in the corner. <laughs> and Ruby's talking to Sean. Nobody knows that I'm the loneliest of all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's what it would be let's be fucking real <laughs> but um so but i'm bad. saying that like because this again is so much more powerful than the first instance of it it doing a rule of three in my brain is a good way of like making it come back around yeah but i like you said fitting it in I, i'm not sure how they would fit it in for a third time but this was powerful it and, was yeah, yeah. And then it just doesn't take because she goes in for the sweet release of death and then like five but, minutes of screen time later she's like, alarm guess my job's up. not done! <laughs> the alarm clock goes up and she's like, well, I guess I'll die later. <laughs> Coming out of my grave and I've been doing just fine. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man! Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? Where's the mesh? Um, but yeah, so... So Jean saves Ruby, and they decide that they're going to just, like, roll the train. The hype train has no brakes. Mm -hmm. uh, Dreamwise informed Ruby that, one, there's a reason that her sniper rifle is backwards, which I, we still haven't really figured out what the fuck that was. Uh, I, I, and I didn't two, get it. It was Ruby lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> Same. We tried. We rewatched. We tried again. It was it's just, maybe we'll get payoff for that next episode. But for now, it's just like... Well, she shot Whitley. <laughs> that was, uh... That's kind of funny. <laughs> like, it's terrible to be like, she shot a child. That was hilarious. But also, like, she shot Bat Whitley. <laughs> He's not really there. <laughs> she shot the nightmare version of She him, shot yes. the nightmare version of Whitley. She shot the classy Halloween decoration. <laughs> she shot the butler bat. It's fine. <laughs> He's wearing a waistcoat. Who cares? I want to see, you know, they've got the schnee manner. I really want to see a spirit Halloween banner like over it now. <laughs> I mean, the schnee manner is done though. <laughs> like, okay, I don't think we ever put up a spoiler warning at the beginning, but like, spoiler whole ass talking about literally all of Ruby, so. I mean, in the dream, but oh, you're yeah, absolutely that's right. true. There's not yeah, really a there's no, manner anymore. There's a crater Kroger. that you could put a spirit <laughs> Halloween banner over. You could just float just it on the water. Atlas, on top. Atlas, here's a spirit Halloween banner just on all of Atlas. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Way to go, James. Fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, oh, we don't man. have time to talk, we don't have time <laughs> well, you to talk about that, but that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, my favorite thing is just spirit Halloween banners on, on anything. It makes it instantly hilarious. I think the funniest fucking one I've seen, and I am going to be as coy about this as I can because it's not a ruby, it's not a rooster teeth property. Uh, Critical Role Campaign 2. Once they start having a fully animated opening, there's a particular shot of a particular character's thing in the opening. Y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking oh. about. And once certain developments happened, someone took that <laughs> shot and shopped a spirit <laughs> Halloween banner on it. Dang. And I was crying. <laughs> it was Dang. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sincerely wow. hoping that there are some critters who are watching this and putting it together and going, they what? <laughs> Tell me it's not perfect. Tell me it's not amazing. I wish I had it. I didn't save it when I saw it, and I'm very sad because it was really good. Anyway, Spirit Halloween <laughs> banner store, Spirit Halloween store banners on things is one of my favorite things. And for those of you who are watching this who are not American and going, "What the fuck are you talking about?" 
Spirit Halloween is a temp Spirit Halloween store is a temporary pop up store that tend to pop up in the fall. They sell Halloween decorations, they sell costume parts, they sell you know all that fun stuff. It's the Halloween aisle of a party city, but it's the whole ass store. Mm -hmm. The thing is, they are known for moving into vacated storefronts. So if a store closes for any reason, if it has to leave, etc., etc., they don't ever put up like permanent letters because there's no reason to. They just <laughs> hang a banner up top. <laughs> so like Kmart is whole ass out of business. You will see Kmart storefronts that now have Spirit Halloween store on them. So like when something is empty, it's kind of the joke now to put the Spirit Halloween store banner on it. Like, don't worry, the Spoopies will be moving in soon. <laughs> and I guess now they're making a horror movie about Spirit Halloween stores, which is just... Is that real? Yes. I thought that was a joke. <laughs> I think there's a teaser for it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's oh, fucking real. Oh, that's funny. I'm here for it, and I hope it's available to rent at home immediately because I don't want to be drunk in a theater. <laughs> but I will be drunk <laughs> watching Spirit Halloween, the movie. That sounds delightful. We are 100% covering it for Silver Sense. <laughs> Just, it's so dumb, oh but I'm God. here for it. That's so, so yeah, right. That's the Spirit <laughs> Halloween joke. So just... Hang a spirit Halloween banner on Schnee Manor, because that's what it's good for now. <laughs> so, and there's a nightmare inside. Okay, that was a hell of a tangent. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so, um, what were you talking about before that? Uh, crazy train. Crazy train. Crazy train. Crazy train has no brakes except when it's physically stopped by Negerweiss going, I am the brakes! <laughs> we're like, okay. This is happening. The sword gets pulled out by Angry Armor Dad. Uh, so Big Nicholas. Big Nicholas. Hail Santa. Wait, her dad is the one in the, the silver suit of yes. armor. Big Nicholas is the big, like, golden robot. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's it looks like great googly moogly. Everything's going to shit. And then the sky opens up. Yeah. And a bunch of the White Fang and Grimm mashups that we saw fall out. Along with Yang on her motorbike, attempting wearing, to save Jean and the biddies, wearing, wearing Jean's, Jean's cloak. cloak. Yeah. And uh, Blake with a fucking makeover. Dude! And I think at this point, we need to cut back to Horry Jail. Yeah, I, I almost got through that sentence. <laughs> almost. <laughs> meanwhile. Meanwhile, Horry back jail. in Horry Jail. <laughs> Why I'm going to wind white? up with a goddamn shirt that says meanwhile in horny jail. <laughs> I'm ace, which makes this both better and worse. <laughs> you know? I was going to say, you can make one. I can make one. Make I one. have a tea public. It's a problem. <laughs> Whoa. We should talk to Mark. We should talk to him. Anyway. Hey, Mark. Can we make a shirt about horny jail? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Anyway, uh, we, so, we've had discussions in Horny Jail about how <laughs> what's, sorry? what's in there. You did this. This is your fault. Please continue. I don't know if I can. <laughs> we, we had discussions in Horny Jail about how where this out-of-the-way mansion with the creepy-ass decorations and the incongruously bashful door... Sadly, Bashful works really well if it's horny jail. Uh, <laughs> That's why I called it that. I know. Uh, is where Weiss kind of sticks all of the things that she hasn't really processed yet. The stuff that she doesn't like to think about, the stuff that she doesn't get yet and hasn't managed to wrap her brain around, the stuff where it's like, I'll save that for later Had and detangle that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could unpack that or we could throw away the whole suitcase. So this is where she's stowing all the suitcases that she has not unpacked. <laughs> we don't have time to unpack <laughs> all of that. <laughs> so this is where, and that's why we have like the Grim and White Fang amalgamates. And this is where we have Blake's uh, relic that mm -hmm. they have there. And you yeah, fucking called it. You did. Pattern pick, recognition. Pick up the phone, Shion, because Katie called it. <laughs> Shion out here trying really hard to get Ruby out of Inception and it not fucking working. Poor Shion. They <laughs> are doing their best. I have to imagine, I would hope that this is one of the more 
buck wild instances. That it's not normally this. this bad. That yeah. it's not normally this bad. I feel like she. I feel like there have been failures. For sure. Absolutely. And I feel like there have been skin of your teeth rescues. But I also feel like she on just watching this one like, oh. This one's so weird. My God. <laughs> These kids. They are all children. Oz, what the fuck? I have never had, I've had some bad ones. I've had some fine ones. I've never had one this weird, Oz. Like, Why are your kids so weird? This is getting insane. <laughs> this is getting insane. And this is like a month after you yeeted them off of a cliff. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Great. You're awesome. a bad cool, teacher. Cool, cool. <laughs> You're a bad teacher, Hud. You're a bad headmaster. This, this is why I travel. This is why I don't <laughs> stay here. This is why I train other huntsmen and huntresses to handle nightmares. This is my headcanon now. I don't give a shit. I, the, the, the Shion's Academy for Fighting Nightmares, like, I'm here for this, I'm here for Geist Buster, I'm here for all of the Absolutely, other, yes. like, this is what I need. All of the spinoffs. I don't have it in me to design them all, but this is what I need. Uh, uh so yeah, back in, so, back in the, in the mansion, in so Morning Jail. So, talking yeah. about this and Blake going, so we need to be able to move around within the nightmare. We need what Jean has. So I guess we should just infect me with the uh, the nightmare that infected Jean. We have him in storage. We can just roll him out. And everyone else is like, excuse me? <laughs> Yang going, uh, quick question, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it allows for free movement. And if someone needs to face Nega Weiss, she's more powerful than all of us, but Nega Blake will be hella powerful, so there's that. Like, it stands to reason that I'd be strong enough to fight her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then we have two very different, like, our extreme parts have two very different ideologies. Like, this is a sort of thing where if they clash, we can kind of figure things out when we make up, when we wake up as a result of this clash. But for now, like this, like if we were awake and we were having this clash, we could sit down and talk it out. For now, everything is just way too crazy and exaggerated and literally nightmare fueled for that to happen. But it's enough for me to be able to hold off Nego Weiss so you guys can go wake up Weiss. And then I guess after you do that, you can come wake me up too. You'll figure wake something out. Wake me up inside. <laughs> Call my name and save me from the dark. Damn uh, it, Katie! You <laughs> made the perfect joke! We need to stop the recording now. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's over! <laughs> I guess we hadn't made all the jokes, because I don't know if we did that one already. I don't think we did! We might have! Damn it! I oh, don't that's remember! So good. Oh. <laughs> I will say, I'm very proud of myself <laughs> well for, done. for the brain going, wait a minute, we can use Save this! Save me! <laughs> um, I will say that on paper, like as a concept, the worst aspects of these two characters duking it out in a nightmare dreamscape that is constantly shifting and breaking apart as they clash is such a cool idea. It's so awesome and I love <coughs> seeing it happen. I wish they the had allocated right a little bit more of the budget to it. And this is when we're kind of jumping from one episode to the next. Uh, yeah, we've bit. we've full the the plan to the plan to make the to bring in the second nightmare and just calling Xion and going, hey, hey professor, professor, and Xion going These children are going to be the You death realize of me. <laughs> that this is extremely dangerous and could result in losing you to a nightmare as well. You have coins left? Great. Hold on to those. You're going to fucking need them. Um... Oz? <laughs> okay, cool. And you're good with it? All right. Okay. I guess. I guess. Keep in mind that if this doesn't work, Weiss will never wake up. And also we have a whole nother set of problems. <laughs> Weiss will never wake up. And then also you will probably go down with her. <laughs> and again... Just by dint of this being a midquel, we know that it's going to work. Yeah. But it's still just like... Or at the very least, they'll figure something out yes. in the next couple yes. episodes. Yeah. Well, we have three episodes left. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a 13 episode. Like, we have three episodes left. We can't pull out too many more batshit insane things. <laughs> we do have to start wrapping things up. And we might have to spend part of an episode getting Blake out of her dream. So, 
You know, or we'll just hand wave that too because that's what this show does. That's what happened with Ruby. What happened? Inceptioned. So we'll just hand wave Nightmare Blake waking. Up. And Yang's basically over here going. Well, I'm angry about that. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and Yang's just basically over here going, uh, one sane man reporting in. God damn. <laughs> the only one who did not get infected by this nightmare. Perfect record. <laughs> Go me. Yes. <laughs> And I am yeah, invincible. <laughs> you are loony. And yeah, grabs the relic, finds her motorbike, finds Jean's discarded cloak, and just kind of rides the very, fucked up dream collision. Very conveniently finds convenient Jean's finds cloak. cloak. Because then and the nightmare is looking to like envelop her, and then it's like, oh wait, never mind. Don't worry about it. You got a you got a cloak that apparently is not only invisible to me, but also repels me. I suppose. I mean, the yeah. sword did too. Yeah. So it's it's like okay, <laughs> it cool. Make, Great. It makes awesome. sense, but at, it, it it was hella convenient for it sure. It was. It was. But sometimes it just needs to be there, you know. So yeah. So we we have our crazy ass fight and Yang pulling people's asses out of the fire and going, "This is what we're doing." I will Let's say, go. She wears the cloak very well. She does. It's a very cool look for her. Yes. <laughs> it's like so. I'm gonna take on the robot. And Ruby, you can get inside and take out the nightmare. Here's the last relic. Don't fucking lose it. And, and uh, we're just going to stay out of the way of all this. And all yeah. this being the... <laughs> this is where we pull out the James A. Janice again because it works so well. The Negafi! <laughs> I will say, the transformation bit where Blake turns into Nightmare Blake... Mwah! Chef kiss! Just Adam showing up. It's like, that guy. I didn't miss you! My Adam Torres playlist is seven, is Goodbye Earl 17 times! Every time he's on screen, it's like, this fucking guy. Fuck this guy! <laughs> but I think it's very fitting that he appears right before she she delves yeah. into this... this. Um, and then the, the moment where she actually transforms into Nightmare Blake, the animation... Oh yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. I am convinced that is where the entirety of the budget for this episode went because it was beautiful. Yeah. And so much of what else was in this episode wasn't. It's not. <laughs> because it's, you can tell when they cut corners. And again, we talk about lingering on things too long or framing. Like there was one shot where it's an alleyway and a rooftop. And it's a second or two of alleyway, of alleyway and then running across the rooftop. And then it stays on that shot for another couple seconds. So it's just like, okay. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, bits with uh, Yang being on her motorcycle. Like when Ruby hopped onto the back of Blake's, or Yang's motorcycle, and they start driving like on the side of a building, I think. It, 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 like, it, huh. it should have been very cool, but because of the way the shots were introed and outroed, yeah. like, it really left something to be desired. Like, I'm like, I should be really hyped for this action set piece, and I'm not because it keeps stuttering and stopping, you know? Kind of like when I try to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> and then there were bits where it was just like, oh, that's off model. Oh, Ooh. Hmm. And look, I say this, yeah, we say this as like non-animation people. Yeah. We, we are, <laughs> we know so much hard work goes into creating an animated property and yeah. it's not easy. This it's, is, this is not us going, I could do it better. No. I know for a fact that I could not. <laughs> I am not trained in these arts. It is incredibly difficult to get a show made. Like, I can sit here and say, I can see these flaws, they kind of detract from the experience, but I'm not going to sit here and go, I no. I at one point witnessed someone watch a Red vs. Blue episode drop and then go, I could do better in an hour, and I'm like, great, so you're going to script, shoot, record all that, record all that, e edit it, render it, see you in an hour. <laughs> Just no reply. Yeah, no. There's, but... there's so much in like terms of animation, like animation discourse from people who have no concept of anything. <laughs> I can't remember which law it is, but it's one of those, the less you know about something, mm -hmm. the more capable or knowledgeable you are convinced you are <laughs> in that subject. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, you know nothing about it, so you sit there and go, I could do that. 
It's the, the trap the guy who made Mono's The Hands of Fate fell into, right? How like, hard can it be to make a movie, says a fertilizer magnate. <laughs> With a video camera that could record eight minutes of footage without sound. <laughs> Manos the Hands of Fate. I will take Manos the Hands of Fate over Burdemic. I will. And I know that's fighting words. But is I, it? Yeah. Is anyone is, gonna die on that hill? <laughs> there is very much contention over which is the worst movie, Burdemic or Manos. I'm like, I mean, I mean that's Burdemic like is boring, and had the 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 claim to fame for Burdemic is boring, and also those gifts of birds. Manos is just a glorious stuttering train wreck the entire time, and includes like thirty minutes of extraneous driving footage. That was cut from the Mystery Science Theater version. So when you watch that version, and there's still way too much driving footage, that's after it's been edited. Also, the that camera recording with no sound meant that they got uh, two men and one woman to do all of the dubbing. And that woman was every woman in the movie <laughs> and every child in the movie. And oh wow. boy! I will say... And also the existence of Torgo! Having only seen Manos and not Birdemic, I will say that w in regards to that particular mashup, no matter who wins, we lose. We all lose. We, lose. we all lose. We all We're all lose. losers in this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, uh... Point being is, like, when we point out the these sort of shortcomings in the animation, we're not doing it carelessly or no. or with any venom. Um, yeah. Like a lot of other people who don't really understand the process, there's there's no venom here. It's yeah. just it should be it should be this really great exciting climactic thing, but because of these clearly budgetary shortcomings, it's hard to really let yourself yeah. get swept up in the moment. It it throws you out of it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it's. Sometimes you know when an anime is kind of saving its budget on things for other things. Sometimes you can sit there and go, wait, so why are all the Death Knights in Overlord CGI? <laughs> because hand drawing those things would be a fucking nightmare. Same with, why are all the Faceless Soldiers CGI? Oh, same thing. There's like 400 of them right now and we're mm -hmm. not gonna. But then you know that's the cost saving measures for Overlord. And then we get crazy Sakuga happening. And it's like... Okay. Watch but Overlord is what Katie's saying. Watch Overlord <laughs> is absolutely what Katie is saying. But, uh, well, it's definitely not for everyone. So, you know, <laughs> depending on your comfort levels. Uh, but, yeah, it's sometimes when you know about animation, you can kind of see the cost-saving measures. And sometimes the cost-saving measures are obvious even when you don't know a lot about animation. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that the cost-saving measures we got in this episode were obvious mm -hmm. because it yeah. got to the point of messing with the pacing a little bit in those very long lingering shots mm -hmm. yeah again if you're looking at your app going did the app freeze <laughs> yeah did Crunchyroll freeze? if i'm sitting here going there's no background music nobody's saying anything and we're just lingering on a still shot of a character and they're not blinking <laughs> did Crunchyroll <laughs> freeze <laughs> oh no we're still going okay like if you, yeah, that's if just you're a look chilling. at Shion just regretting every decision they've ever made in that their lives. That is Shion <laughs> dragging this entire show to a halt with the force of their disapproval. Us pain. And then going, God fucking damn it. Fine! Fine! We'll do it your way, children! I include you in that, Ozpin, uh. children. <laughs> Glinda's the only adult in this room. Pyrrha can come too. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I... Speaking of, you know, all yeah. that, all that's going on, uh, Ruby is just able to sort of waltz through, uh, because she's got the, she's got the relic now, yeah. so she waltzes through and she's about to fight the nightmare. Um, the, the big thing I think that takes up a good chunk of this episode is the fight between Negative yeah. Weiss Nega Blake and, and Negative Weiss. Weiss. I really like seeing them clash. I wish it was a little bit better executed action choreography yeah. wise especially since that's one of the big things we come to ruby for yeah um but i love what they were talking about like i love oh, yeah i love the dialogue <laughs> like i wish i yeah the 
I, I love the dialogue and I love, again, the, the incredible concept. I just wish it had been a little bit better executed. Um, and I don't know what they could have done you know, because we we don't know what, what kind yeah. of time crunch they were. We're under. not. We're not, we we don't know what their back end looked like, what their pipeline looked yeah. like. We can't sit here and go, well, if they just done this, we we yeah. don't know that. We won't have those answers, and that's not something we can comment on. Yeah, all like, we have is the end result. Yeah, like uh, the the previous episode was using a lot of split screens, and um, I think like you were saying that that's like an animation cost saving measure. Um, but also in an attempt to try to make things a little bit more visually interesting for an episode that otherwise kind of didn't have any stylistic yeah. identity. Um, this one, like, but it, it was weird to see all these split screens yeah. come out of nowhere. Um, I don't know what other options they had, though. Yeah. I don't know what could have... Um, what could have given them more time and ability to let this episode breathe a little bit more. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think, again, we don't know what their back end and what their pipeline looks like. We can't know that. So that's not something we can comment on. The only thing we can comment on is the show that we're watching, the finished product. <laughs> that being said, yeah. it is great to see Blake one again. Looks fabulous. My God, those <laughs> shoes! Oh <laughs> Cannot my wait God. to see the cosplays of yes. uh, <laughs> of all of this. Let's oh, be real. all of it. Um, but like, <laughs> it's really great having somebody of neg negative Weiss's same power set be able to go. Well, maybe have you considered that you're wrong? <laughs> Seeing Nega Weiss <laughs> on the back foot a little bit is wild, and also just. This clash of ideals where mm -hmm. you know that it's something that both of them have held, like this is aspects of the both of them, but it's also the the funhouse mirror aspects. Mm -hmm. They have been warped by the nightmare to be as offensive is not the word I'm looking for. Vitriolic? Belligerent? Vitriolic is worse. I was going to say vitriolic belligerent and belligerent are both great <laughs> words. So it's the sort of thing where. Again, they, they mentioned this, like, if we were having this discussion awake, it's possible that we could come to see eye to eye. And then when we wake up afterwards and remember this, like, it's possible that we'll be able to have this discussion and talk about these things. But you have two polar opposites here, literally black and white, who by design, by the nightmare's design, cannot come together and talk about this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They both have to be 100% convinced that they are right because that's how nightmares work. Mm -hmm. It's the unstoppable force and the immovable object. <laughs> so it's absolutely fascinating to watch that be not only combat skills, but also life philosophies. Mm -hmm. But the most extreme case... In, whoop, sorry. I'll get it. <laughs> Poke you <down> there. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. I got vaccinated today. That would hurt. That would be so mean. I'm so sorry. You, you didn't actually do it, though. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what a weird night. Um, you're seeing the most extreme versions of these ideologies mm -hmm. pitted against each other. So, yeah, like, it was an absolutely buck wild fight. And part of it is. The fact that a good part of this is also philosophical. So, yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, definitely one of the highlights of the series so far, just on a, on a purely conceptual level. I'm so Super cool. glad they kept these character designs under wraps. I yes! Went to, I went to the booth they had at Anime Expo for this, and they had, like, the character turnarounds and whatnot, and this was definitely not there. I would very happy that they kept uh, negative Blake close to the chest, that they yeah. let that be a surprise. Yeah. Um, because that's, it's a very, very cool design. Oh, it's so wild. Uh, and she wears it very well. Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. <laughs> like I said, I can't wait to see all the cosplayers next year. Like, it's so one of those, she walks into a room and party was like, damn, and the other party was like, I need to leave now before I die. <laughs> It's one of those, just, just, just woof, I got Norton! <laughs> I want her to step on me, that's definitely inappropriate. 
<laughs> you look great and I am terrified. <laughs> that sort of thing. I am both horrified and aroused. Aroused, you might say. The, the mark me down as scared and horny. <laughs> It was from Danganronpa Abridged, in case anybody... That was Danganronpa Abridged. Mine, I think, was SNL. Was it? I think so. <laughs> the scared and horny bit, I think, is SNL. I don't know. Uh, oh, man. Good I mean, that up. she did get her makeover in horny jail. <laughs> <laughs> I just, sorry, just since we jumped back there, I did like that in, in Bashful Prison or whatever, there was the, the book, The Man with Two Souls. Yes. Which... Im like, I know it's because Blake was reading it that Weiss had, like, filed it away, but I also really love the idea of Weiss reading it going, I didn't understand that. <laughs> Just like, oh, I didn't no. get it. <laughs> like, I didn't get it. it like, is so this foreshadowing? <laughs> it's the, is this a pigeon name? Is this foreshadowing? <laughs> Not for you, it ain't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. I fucking love the is this a pigeon meme. It's so versatile. <laughs> Not for you. Don't worry Not for about you. it. Don't worry about it. It's foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's key shooting butterflies. <laughs> fucking foreshadowing butterflies. Get out of here. <laughs> Shoot. Be gone. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's everything. <laughs> I think so. Since we're talking about fucking butterflies. <laughs> fucking butterflies. And <laughs> nobody into, suspects into, the butterfly. Into more <laughs> spoilers for the show proper. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. I, uh, so I think we can call it good on that. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that, and I think, I think anything yeah. Anything else we want to say? No. Yeah. No, the only other thing, again, these were uneven episodes. I think when they were good, they were great. They were a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, they really left something to be desired. And I really hope the show kind of um, finds its footing again yeah. and finishes really strong. Yeah. And that, like, these clearly budgetary or time restrictions that kind of made these episodes a little bit lackluster, I'm really hoping that that was because they were saving time and yeah. energy. Yeah. For a big show-stopping finale, so, so that's crossed. that's what we're hoping for. Yep. Anyway, anyway, I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Mangwin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. I have a YouTube channel called Silver Screams, where clearly we need to talk about the spirit. Halloween. I guess so. <laughs> Holy hell! Um, I also have a podcast called No Love Lost, where my co-host Will Link loves Lost, and I don't. And we talk about it. Um, we're also members of Rooster Team Radio, where we talk about other teeth. Oh, other teeth? <laughs> Bone apple teeth! <laughs> Wrong podcast. We talk about other Rooster Teeth related properties. Sorry, guys, we are very loopy today, in case you cannot tell. Big very, Tuesday energy. Very hard to string more than one word together at any given time. Hurdle. <laughs> anyway, uh, so go check that out. Go check all of those things out. And I'm Katie. You can follow me all over the social medias and on Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also a co-host on Nighttime at the Nerd Bar. It's a weekly show on the Fanversation YouTube channel. We stream live on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. And we talk about all sorts of fun stuff. We talk about anime. We're going to start covering uh, Spy Family and My Hero Academia when they come back in October. We talk about Overwatch League. We talk about uh, geeky news, basically. Just whatever the heck we're into. It's a, it's a fun little talk show. It's a good time. You should absolutely join us. Um, yes, if you would like to give us the monies in exchange for doing this crazy shit, we have a Patreon that gets you things early. We have a Kofi if you want to throw a couple bucks our way. And we do commissions. Not requests, commissions. Um, I feel like there's other stuff. I'm sure there's other stuff, but right now I'm just like, you know what? Support the post office and support your local libraries. Be it's, excellent to each other. Be excellent to each other. Get vaccinated if you haven't already. All that fun shit. All these things that, like, help society run, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and take care of each other because that is how we get through all of this life, etc., Hit all those nice little buttons down there. You know what you do. You know what they do. Like, like subscribe, subscribe, ding. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye.
I don't have any. I got nothing. <laughs>